Hi guys, it's Slightly Ill Dane here, and today I'm going to be chatting to you about my quarter two uh, 2023 favourite books. So these are my top 10 books from April to June 2023. We're going to start at number 10, count down to one. I will link below to any of these that have uh, dedicated reviews on the channel. Let's get started. Dane reads. So at number 10 we have Hamish and the Never People by Danny Wallace and we actually have at number 9 Hamish and the World Stoppers by Danny Wallace. So these are two books in Danny Wallace's kind of kids series. Uh, it's basically about a young kid called Hamish and his little gang of friends who saved the world. Uh, Danny Wallace is a humorous writer. Um, he's, he's written a lot of like humorous non-fiction. He's also written sort of a serious novel or two for adults. Um, but his, his children's books, his Hamish series are a lot of fun and I would definitely recommend if you have kids or even if you're just a big kid yourself I mean the fact that they are aimed at children and they still made it into my top 10 books of the quarter is is pretty telling and number eight we have Brian Herbert Kevin J Anderson Deb Pramanik and Alex Guimera's Dune House of Trades volume 3 um, this was just the sort of the triumphal ending to the graphic novel adaptation of the House of Trades novel that Kevin J Anderson and Brian Herbert worked on which itself is an extension of the original Dune series by Frank Herbert House of Trades is actually one of my favourite of the prequel stories and I think the graphic novel did a really good job of it. It made it really accessible and really easy to understand for people who, um, you know, might might struggle otherwise. So definitely if you've struggled with the prequel novels, check out the uh, graphic novels. Seven, we have Too Much Information by Dave Gorman. So funnily enough, Dave Gorman and Danny, Danny Wallace used to be flatmates. Uh, and Dave Gorman's known for writing kind of comedic non-fiction where he goes off and does crazy dares and things like that. Uh, in this one, it's more that he, when he's sitting at home on his computer, he, he follows things through and does a lot of research. So he'll click like, you may also enjoy links on websites and be like, why do they think I might enjoy this? Um, and he'll respond to spammers and all of this stuff. And basically this, this book, Too Much Information, is just his quest of coming to terms with the vast amounts of information that we all sort of pass through on a daily basis thanks to the internet. Uh, this is pretty interesting, I mean it is a few years old by now but it does still feel pretty relevant. I mean not gonna lie, I don't know how long it's gonna stay relevant because there are a lot of references to Twitter in it and Twitter might go belly up so we, we will see. And number six we have Half Human Heroes which is a fantasy anthology edited by Jeremy Fee. I may be a bit biased here because I have a short story of my own in the collection but I only rate based on the other stories and try to keep an honest and open opinion. But it's just a really interesting fantasy collection, uh, the gist of it being the, that um, you know not all humans are fully, not all heroes are fully human. And uh, I really like the point that Jeremy made in the introduction where, you know, we talk about half elves, but surely amongst the elvish community, they will talk about them as half human. Um, so yeah, definitely want to check out if you haven't already, especially if you love fantasy. But it's also just got some great author tube talent in there as well. And Biggie has just jumped up because he wants to be fed. At number five, we're keeping the humans theme with The Humans by Matt Haig. Uh, this book is a novel basically about like an alien sort of sentience that is sent to Earth to um, present, prevent a discovery from being publicised, basically. Um, and along the way, he kind of learns what it means to be human. That's all I can really say without going into major spoilers, but it was just beautifully written. It was actually really cleverly done because it, it was almost overdone at times um, in terms of, like, how the alien sees our world and, like, you know, he doesn't know what a traffic light is or whatever. Um, but it, it, it worked out well in the context of the book and, yeah, definitely would recommend. And number four, we have Biggie Cobain. No, and number four, we have The Book of Dane by Wonderbly. Um, so this was a super cute book that my my partner Shay got for me for my birthday and it's basically like um, it's a custom book that has all of the stuff that was happening in the world when I was born and uh, shows you like little pie charts of what's inside my brain and where my safe space is and all of that it's just a very very cute book um, it's one of two um, sort of customised books that I'm really proud to own and um, yeah the other one I, I, did, I got when I was like two or something so it was really nice to have a new one to go into my collection so thank you Shay. And number three we have Tales from the White Heart by Arthur C. Clarke so this is different to Clarke's normal stuff in that it basically it's set in a pub the White Heart um, which apparently was a real pub and uh, it kind of follows like the clientele who go in there and the improbable stories that are told. Uh, it, it almost reminded me of like the Uncle Oswald stories by, by Roald Dahl or something like that. Um, they're, just, it's, they're just really, really fun little stories. They're kind of humorous science fiction stories, I guess you would call them, um, all set in the backdrop of this pub. I, I just think it was fantastic. It was one of the best Arthur C. Clarke books I've ever read. Um, and it was a real nice surprise because I wasn't expecting that going in, you know? 
At number two, we have Termush by Sven Holm. So this is one that I was sent for review, and I was really happy with it. Uh, it's translated. I can't remember what the original language was now. I want to say it might have been Danish. Um, but basically, it's like a post-apocalyptic novel uh, about what happens at this. It's like a luxury retreat that people have paid their money to go and stay at this retreat if the apocalypse happens and then it kind of deals with what happens when they get survivors at the gates and all of that kind of stuff and also you know the inevitable tension of having a group of people together all locked up I always think that's the most interesting like in my novel Meat um, where there's um, a disease outbreak on a factory farm is actually the kind of falling out between the humans that is more interesting to me than you know the diseased animals even though they're kind of the point of the story um, and it was the same with The Walking Dead it was always more interesting to see the conflict between the humans than to just see another zombie scene you know and uh, Sven Holm did a really good job of it and it's also almost prophetic it's definitely groundbreaking because of the time it was written it was kind of Cold War era um, so yes definitely recommend if you can get a ha your, uh, your hands on a copy of it and at number one we have a rendezvous with Rama by Arthur C Clarke so this is now my new favorite Arthur C Clarke book basically Scientists discover an object that's heading towards the earth. They call it Rama because they've already used all the names from like Latin and Greek mythology So they go to like Hindu mythology and um, Yeah, a, a space a, a sort of People who are out in space on, an, on a mission already are the only people who are going to be able to intercept it in time And they land on Rama and they explore inside and start to try and figure out what it is um, It's kind of a very mysterious novel. It doesn't give you all of the answers and it raises a lot of questions um, and it's also got this kind of claustrophobic feel, but it's also one of those where like the way I visualize the inside of Rama I keep thinking about it. I, I keep going back to it even now um, And I think that's a sign of a good read. So yeah, definitely my favorite of the quarter So there we have it. Those are my top 10 books of quarter 2 of 2023 As always don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books And if so what you thought of them hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button for more And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot Bye-bye.